Hello everyone, Steven here from Rod Essence with another fragrance review. And this time we have a fragrance from the niche house Le Labo, and the fragrance is called Jasmine 17. Now Jasmine 17 is a fragrance that was released in 2006. 2006 is actually when the house was established. It was co-founded by Edward Roshi and Fabrice Penot. And in 2006 they selected uh, 10 different fragrances to be released to the public. So they hired a uh, few perfumers. Many of these fragrances share the same perfumer and some are even collaborations like Gaillac 10. But in 2006, this is one of the 10 fragrances that was released to the public. So Jasmine 17 is a woody floral musk uh, fragrance and the perfumer behind this one is uh, it's a perfumer whose name has become really a household name in the fragrance community. It's one of the most renowned perfumers in the game and he is very well known for his gourmand uh, compositions. It's Maurice Roussel. Uh, he's one of the most renowned perfumers, many years of experience under his belt. And um, it actually caught me by surprise that this ended up being a Maurice Roussel composition mainly because it is, like I said, a woody floral musk fragrance and he's so well at composing, uh, you know, Gourmand's New Harlem by Bond Number 9, uh, Be Delicious by DKNY, which is on the designer side, Musk Ravageur by Edition de Parfum Frederick Maw. So it caught me by surprise, especially considering that, and one would argue that Le Labo does not have a Gourmand. So he would have been such an optimum candidate to be hired as a perfumer to compose their very first Gourmand fragrance. But when I started analyzing the composition of the fragrance, it really did validate that this is not a fragrance that was composed by a novice, by someone who's new to the field. They're not just a bunch of ingredients thrown together to create what is uh, Jasmine 17 by Le Labo, that it is actually a composition that was very well thought out, very well composed, very well balanced, and I would even argue very well researched. Now, I should note that Le Labo is a concept house of many sorts. I did mention a few of this in my, in my uh, U27 review, but Le Labo is, of course, French, and it translates to the lab, which is, of course, an abbreviation for the laboratory. And they do have kind of a, like a laboratory theme going on where uh, you can purchase one of their bottles. They're available in 10 sizes, 10 milliliters, 50 milliliters, and 100 milliliters. And they do look very much like the bottles that you would find uh, on a shelf in a laboratory. They will print out a label when they compound it right in front of you so you order it at their boutique or in store and they will compound it right in front of you the same way that a barista or you know a bartender would make a drink for you and they'll put a label on there with a quirky little um, expiration date on there and if you choose they will even print your name on there for you or YouTube handle or whatever you'd like for that matter nickname doesn't matter so they are more or less like a laboratory themed fragrance house and one of the things that should be noted about their names is that the name of the fragrance uh, is supposed to represent the most concentrated ingredient in that fragrance so in this case it's jasmine and then the 17 represents the number of uh, notes or the number of ingredients in that particular fragrance so this one has 17 ingredients now they're not all publicized they're not all made available to the public as i'm sure that both the house and the perfumer does not want to disclose you know the entirety of their composition which is of course granted because this is a work of art so you don't want to give away too many secrets but just because the fragrance is called jasmine and this is another thing that i wanted to point out doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be the most perceivable note or the most prominent note in the composition the name of the fragrance is not always um an indication or a clear indication i i, sh I should say as to what the you know star player of the fragrance is going to be in many cases, it's the backbone of the fragrance. So we'll find out if that is necessarily the case for Jasmine 17. But next up, let's move on to the presentation of Jasmine 17 by Le Labo. Here we have the presentation for Jasmine 17 by Le Labo. First up, we have the box, and it's your standard Le Labo box. You have the name of the house written here in the front. Gras, which is the fragrance capital of the world, located in France. And then you have the uh, city that it was uh, compounded in. In this case, I bought it from the boutique in Manhattan. You have the name of the fragrance, the concentration, the size, uh, where it was compounded, for who it was compounded. So you can get your uh, name printed on there, your nickname, your YouTube handle, uh, whatever you prefer. And then a quirky little expiration date. So this one is fresh until 729 of 2013. A little bit of info on the house here at the bottom and the box opens up to reveal 
a very nicely written um, business card with the name of the house here in the front a little bit of info in the back nothing really too much going on merci which is a thank you in french and then you have the le labo team written at, down at the bottom and handwritten of course here on the inside you have a little bit of decorative uh, paper just offering a bit of cushion for the fragrance so the bottle would fit in there just like this and it will prevent it from moving around too much so I think that's pretty well done considering the resources that were available to the company and that's really it as far as the box goes now the bottle here is your laboratory type of bottle um, you have the name of the house written here at the top of the can this is a pretty heavy metal um, uh, top uh, it has a bit of a weight to it, so uh, very well manufactured, I would say. You have the same information here in the front of the bottle, the name of the house, uh, the concentration, the size, where it was compounded, for who it was compounded, and again, the expiration date. Uh, the atomizer works fairly well given its concentration. It is an eau de parfum concentration, so keep that in mind. And that's really it as far as the bottle goes. Very well done. It all works together to satisfy that laboratory theme. And for the most part, that was the presentation for Jasmine 17 by Le Labo. Now, as far as the smell goes for Jasmine 17 by Le Labo, um, this is actually one of my favorite offerings from the Le Labo house. Now, I do have to disclaim uh, this section of the review with saying that um, this is actually geared more toward the feminine crowd because it is primarily, you know, a floral fragrance. It is a woody floral musk fragrance and the jasmine does uh, come across very, very prominently in this composition. So be warned that uh, if you're a guy and you're watching this video and you're not keen on wearing um, what one would consider women's fragrances, then this is one to be avoided. Although all of Le Labo's fragrances are unisex or are marketed as being unisex, this is more on the women's side. Um, but this is a blast of jasmine. The first thing that you're going to get is jasmine and this is one of those rare instances from the house of Le Labo where the name of the fragrance is actually a clear indication as to what the dominant norm the fragrance is going to, is going to be. Uh, like an Oud 27, the name is Oud 27 and the most concentrated ingredient is unmistakably Oud but it's not necessarily the star player. I think Civet or the animalic notes are the star player. Same thing with Patchouli 24. I think Birch Tar is the star player. Uh, patchouli is more or less the backbone of that fragrance. So in this case Jasmine is the star player. Um, not necessarily the backbone. Now it opens up with that blast of Jasmine so it will come across very floral but I think there's something else unique that's going on in this fragrance because it has quite a tart even bitter citrusy type of smell in the opening. So you get the jasmine and I applied it on my hand about a half hour ago and I do have to say that um, the citrus notes are still quite evident. Now as many of you probably know mandarin orange, bergamot, lime, lemon, all of these citrus ingredients are very volatile which means that they will evaporate very quickly so they constitute as top notes when you're talking about the pyramid of um, top middle and base notes of fragrance. In this case, it's been about a half hour and the citrus, that bitter citrus quality of the fragrance is still lingering. And uh, this is why I say that this is not a composition that was just thrown together by some novice or an amateur. This is something that's been very well researched and very well composed and balanced. And the reason being is because, okay, one of the ingredients in this fragrance is neroli. Now, neroli, as many of you probably already know, is a super expensive ingredient. And this is something that I mentioned in previous reviews. Um, so neroli essential oil can either be extracted from the bark of the plant, the uh, tr uh, leaves of the plant. It could also be extra extracted from the small unripe fruits of the plant. I'm given uh, to understand that in this fragrance it's extracted from the fruits. And that fruit yields a lemon-like quality. So right off the bat you smell a bit of lemon in there but it's not actually lemon. So that's one really unique thing that's going on in this fragrance. Now there's also bitter orange. So the bitter orange gives it that bitter quality that I mentioned or that tart quality. Um, but it still retains a floral nuance because yes there is jasmine in the opening but there's also orange blossom in there. So that contributes to that citrus accord, I would call it, because it's a combination of different notes working together to give off that impression. So it contributes to that citrus accord, but it's still very, very floral. Um, but again, I don't think it's something that's overbearing. Yes, the jasmine is still the star player, but I think the 
orange blossom more or less just gives it character. Now there's another really unique ingredient in this composition called Mei Chen. And when it's used in perfumery, it's known by its special um, classification, which is, uh, which is, let's say, Cuba Bay. And that's a small evergreen shrub that's found in Southeast Asia, um, mainly parts of China. And that's the one that in this fragrance, that's where the, let's say, Cuba Bay in this fragrance originates from. It's China. And uh, it has a, a citrus quality that is extracted from the fruits of that plant as well or that shrub and that gives off a lemon like quality as well so you have that and then you also have the neroli which is giving it a bitter quality and then you have the it's not necessarily lemongrass but it's called palmarosa which is a part of the lemongrass family so that gives it a vegetal quality which i think um, characterizes the uh, jasmine in a very unique way but it also gives it a lemon quality so you have all these different florals and citrus notes and you know vegetal notes and earthy notes that are working together in such a profound in such a skillful and masterful way that I have to say this is not the work of a novice this is not the work of somebody who just threw in a few ingredients into a bottle and crossed their fingers hoping that the end result is something that's gonna smell good this is something that was premeditated uh, this is something that is obviously the result of formal training in the art and this is the work of a master perfumer. I have to say that this is one of my favorite fragrances. I would highly urge somebody who, if you ever have the opportunity to walk into a Le Labo store or if you, ever get, if you ever are given the chance to order a sample of Le Labo fragrances, please include Jasmine 17 in there because, okay, it is uh, very feminine. I will agree to that. Um, but there's something so unique going on in the opening as far as the citrus notes are concerned that it really is worth a sniff. Even if you don't like it, just to appreciate the art and the composition behind the fragrance, I think it really is worth a sniff. Then of course in the base you get a little bit of a creaminess that's attributed to a sandalwood note. So it's kind of funny in the opening because you have Neroli which is at this end of the spectrum as far as monetary value is concerned because it's a super expensive ingredient and then you have Palmarosa which is part of the lemongrass family and that's at the completely other end of the spectrum so you have no sort of discrimination as far as monetary value is concerned you have a super expensive ingredient and then you have one on the cheaper side but they work together so well so you have a creaminess, a creaminess in the base attributed to the sandalwood and you have a bit of a sweetness one of them is traditional because of the vanilla so you get a little bit of vanilla again it's not something that's very evident and it's not something that you're going to notice right off the bat in the opening but it's just to sweeten up that citrus that uh, bitter citrus quality that you get in the opening so at no point in the entire longevity of this fragrance will that bitterness be overwhelming or overbearing um, it's always super tolerable and which is what makes this one of my favorite compositions as far as artistic representation is concerned and then you get a little bit of amber, which gives it a resinous sweetness. Now, n n at no point does the vanilla or the amber supersede each other. One is always concentrated um, in the same manner as the other one is. So um, they will both evaporate at the same time and they will both stick around for just as long as each other will. Um, anyway, I, I just don't want to get redundant with this, but please give this one a try and uh, I love this composition. I can't say too much about it. Um, it really is a work of a master perfumer. So if you are given the chance, check this one out. And that is all I have to say as far as the small goes for this fragrance. But next up, let's move on to the rating for Jasmine 17 by Le Labo. Now, as far as the rating goes for Jasmine 17 by Le Labo, first up we have uniqueness and I gave this fragrance a 10 out of 10. I think this is a very unique composition in the sense that there's something so extraordinarily um, novel and innovative going on in the opening of this fragrance. Although there aren't necessarily too many top notes in this fragrance, but there is something unique going on in the sense that a few ingredients are working together to give this a citrus accord, whereas um, the easy way out would have been to just dump some bergamot in the opening and call it a day, but there's something so much more going on with the neroli and the orange blossom and the palmarosa 
and the Mei Chang and I think it just works to give this a very unique composition. Um, there's also a bit of musk in the bass which I didn't mention just because it doesn't come across too strongly although in the dry down it does become more noticeable and uh, the jasmine in the opening is unique in the sense that um, with any delicate florals like jasmine and rose and uh, gardenia and li lily of the valley um, it's not the essential oil of the floral note is not necessarily extracted using steam distillation it's extracted using fat so they will put the florals on a plate with either animal fat or vegetable fat and that serves to give the fragrance a bit of an animalic smell so you have that going on in the opening you have the musk in the base although um, I was given word by a sales associate in San Francisco and this is something that was told to me or made a comment on my U27 video that they don't use any sort of animal products or animal byproducts in their fragrances so any animalic notes are indeed um, from a, a synthetic nature so just keep that in mind ve uh, vegans and vegetarians that this is an animal friendly fragrance um, but yes it does have that quality in the opening just overall the composition serves to uh, come across as very unique and very well researched so I gave this a 10 out of 10 in terms of uniqueness next up we have longevity and I gave Jasmine 17 a 7 out of 10 this is an eau de parfum concentration, so I'm expecting six to eight hours. I got seven, which is average, so I will give it an average rating of seven out of 10. Next up, we have projection, and this one projected, I would say, a pretty decent amount, um, a little below an arm's length, but it projected for a good two and a half to three hours. Now, had it utilized more uh, top notes in the fragrance, I think it would have projected a little better but of course there's probably something going on in there that we are just not made aware of or information and notes in the uh, particular composition that are just not divulged to us uh, but this is one of those fragrances where as soon as you spray it it just fills up the room um, it doesn't project in the way that traditional or you know generic fragrances project but it does fill up the room in a very unique way so I gave this one a 7 out of 10 for projection I feel like it does the job but again, it only lasts about two and a half to three hours uh, while, those, while, that citrus, while that citrus accord is still lingering in this fragrance. Next up, we have versatility, and I gave this fragrance an 8 out of 10. It's versatile in the sense that a woman could wear it. Uh, it is geared more toward the feminine crowd, so keep that in mind. Um, but it is a year-round type of fragrance. I think the floral notes in this one uh, is primarily the jasmine makes it very appropriate for the spring and the summer seasons um, but I do think that it'll, it will perform pretty well in the winter and the fall as well just try to wear it on the warmer days but I think it is a year-round type of fragrance um, it's appropriate for all types of, of uh, social scenarios I can see this one being worn casually um, there isn't necessarily a playful nature to it so I can't really see it being worn on a night out but you could wear it when you just want to smell clean and you want to smell feminine um, but I can see this being worn in a semi-formal setting. I can see this being worn in a formal setting as well. So it satisfies all types of social scenarios and it's a very versatile fragrance in that regard. So I gave it an 8 out of 10, but again, it is marketed as unisex, but it's not unisex. So I did take points off for that. And then last up, we have presentation. And as I said in my U27 review, I will give this one a 10 out of 10 as well. I know that there are, there are some people that are avidly against the presentation of Le Labo fragrances, and I agree with them. I will say that I do agree with them, although it sounds hypocritical. Um, yes, all of them look the same. I do think that Le Labo um, could have utilized uh, better resources in their packaging. Um, just because the bottles look the same and to me it comes across as it being an easy way out so they don't have to personalize every single bottle but they do personalize it in the sense that they will print a label with your name on it and they do personalize it in the sense that they will add a quirky little expiration date on there and they'll write the name of the person who compounded and where it was compounded whether it's Paris or Tokyo or New York City so there's a lot of personalization going on and I personally like that I'm a very big fan of that so I give this one a 10 out of 10 for that and you know they kinda just deviate away from what's going on in the mainstream and they do their own little thing and of course this is a concept house so they are trying to fulfill that concept so it only makes sense that they will make a bottle that resembles the ones that you would find in a laboratory even the little um, bottles that are now available in uh, oil 
uh, fragrance oil so there's no alcohol in there even those look like the eyedropper bottles so everything sort of satisfies that you know laboratory theme so 10 out of 10 for presentation and that brings this fragrance to an average score of 8.4 out of 10 so there you have it that was my uh, review of Jasmine 17 by Lila Bo thank you so much for watching as always please don't forget to comment rate and subscribe it will be greatly appreciated this has been Stephen with another fragrance review from Red Essence. Thanks again.